I taught chemistry in higher education for several years. Out of my passion for teaching, I taught science at school level also, at, especially at 9th standard and 10th standard. NIT Warangal conducts several programs for school children in which I always took active participation in teaching science through experiments. In this video, I share a few of my thoughts based on my experience in teaching science to students in school education. The, it is the student-centered paradigm now we are in. It is activity-based. Activities are carried out by the students. Teacher plans activities by involving students and facilitates their implementation. Teacher guides, motivates and inspires the students during the learning process. This is the learning outcomes based approach. Intended learning outcomes are achieved by the students through their learning experiences. This is constructivist approach as advocated by the great educational psychologists Piaget and Vygotsky, wherein the students construct knowledge both inside and outside the classroom through activities. Now let us consider the three domains of learning. Cognitive domain which is related to mental process, thinking process. Then affective domain which is related to emotions, feelings, attitudes, values and behavior. Then psychomotor domain. Learning is demonstrated by physical skills such as movement, coordination, manipulation, dexterity, that means skillful performance and speed. All the three domains of learning are important, sir. When you consider cognitive domain that is related to thinking process, students must be able to achieve higher cognitive levels such as apply, analyze, evaluate and create. Schools must provide the learning experiences to students in order to achieve the higher cognitive levels. In science education, the skills related to psychomotor domain, that is physical activities are very important. The experimental skills are very important. The process skills like observation, inquiry, exploration, recording the data, analyzing, Interpreting and evaluating the data and making generalizations are equally important. Both formal and non-formal learning at school level itself must promote experiential learning. Experiential learning among students and inculcate scientific temper, openness, human values and positive attitude among the students which are very important in the affective domain. Then let us see the COPE's learning cycle. That means we provide concrete experience to the students. Based on the experience, the students reflect upon it, ponder over it, think about it. Based on reflection, there is conceptualization, concept formation on a particular topic. So after the some concept is formed, then there will be active experimentation. Student will put it to the active experimentation. When there is active experimentation, there will be a new experience. And the new experience, again new re another reflection on the new experience. Based on the reflection, again, the same concept may become much more clear, concrete, 
or the student may have to even change the concept based on the new experience. It goes on again that concept will be subjected to active experimentation then new experience in the cycle goes on. Learning cycle goes on. There is only beginning and there is no end to learning. Then active learning is very much necessary in learning science. When you want to define active learning, it is any instructional method that engages students in the learning process. In short, active learning requires students to do meaningful learning activities, not some activity, meaningful learning activities and think about what they are doing. Now let us see the quotation of John Holt on this. Learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of activity of learners. Now we must consider both formal learning and non-formal learning in science education. When you consider the formal learning, the curriculum, teaching, learning and assessment strategies must be totally reoriented towards outcome-based approach to promote learning at higher levels in all the three domains of learning, cognitive, psychomotor and effective domains. Infrastructure and lab facilities of government schools must be improved through corporate social responsibility funds of industries, philanthropic contributions, etc. besides the funds from the government. All the schools must be equipped with the low cost teaching aids, materials and the equipment to conduct the demonstration experiments from ninth class higher. If the schools are able to equip themselves with the labs wherein the students can perform the experiments, at least group experiments by themselves, that would be a wonderful thing. Then when you consider the teacher teaching learning process in formal learning, it involves two phases. The first phase is motivation phase and then the second phase is active learning phase. When you consider the motivation phase, in this, teacher gives interesting examples anecdotes and applications from day-to-day -day experiences of the students. Teacher involves the students and gives them opportunity to tell their experiences and additional examples of their own. Teacher introduces discoveries related to the topic by great scientists. Teacher demonstrates an experiment. Teacher challenges the students with open-ended questions followed by deep discussion. All the above strategies may be used appropriately to motivate the students to learn a topic, any given topic. Then let us consider the active learning phase. In this, students learn through experiments and activities using improvised teaching aids. You can involve students also in making teaching aids from low cost and waste materials. They are capable of doing it. Then Socratic method through questions. In Socratic method, the teacher would ask the questions. Students take time to answer. Again, for those answers, student, the teacher puts some more questions. Students answer some more questions. Teacher only puts questions, but the students explore and find out answers. Based on the Socratic method, now we are talking about inquiry method. Students inquire deeply into, a, into the subject based on the observation nature, based on the experiments done, based on the field work anywhere. He goes much deeper by himself. So that gives him knowledge at much higher levels of learning. Learning through discussion among the peer group, very important so that all the students will be engaged. Then group projects. When, I, when you consider the group projects, I advise you to consider the jigsaw project method with three students in a group. In this method, each student does a task 
and after all the three students finish their toss, the outcomes of the toss will be integrated to form the final outcome. This way, all the three students are involved in the doing the project. It's not that one student does and the other two are passive observers. Then through field studies, very important, sir, whether it is in rural setting or urban setting, depending upon that where the school is situated, you can always take them to the field studies. There will be great learning. If your school has exclusive science lab, I advise that you conduct as many classes as possible in the lab itself, either through demonstration experiments or group experiments by the students themselves. This approach has very positive impact on motivation of the students to learn science and then explore, explore and all the process skills, all the experimental skills they will be able to learn. Then you consider non-formal learning. Government of India has launched a new scheme called Rashtriya Avishkar Abhyan scheme. In the primary to higher secondary schools to connect school-based knowledge to life outside the school and making learning of science and math a joyful and meaningful activity. NIT Warangal has been contributing significantly with several activities under RAW including internships to the students, do mini projects in the science labs. There are many other in such institutions in the country doing very well for, for school education. Schools and teachers guide the students, must guide the students to make the best use of science outreach programs from national labs and universities. They wish to share the excitement of science with school children, open houses in national labs, universities and colleges, mobile science laboratories, district science centers, science museums and science exhibitions, science festivals, children science festivals, science congress, you have a separate section, children science congress. So you encourage the students to participate, to attend the children science congress. Popular science magazines like Chekumuki in Telugu, Chekmuk in Hindi, science quizzes. An example, Chekumuki science quiz, popular science radio talks by Vijayan Prashar. Now I conclude this lecture with a quotation from Polya. A great discovery solves a great problem, but there is a grain of discovery in the solution of any problem. Your problem may be modest, but if it challenges your curiosity and brings into play your inventive faculties, and if you solve it by your own means, you will enjoy the triumph of discovery. Such experiences for youth may create a taste for mental work and leave their imprint on the mind for the lifetime. Schools and communities must facilitate such learning experiences to students right from primary education itself and teachers have a vital role to play in all this. Thank you very much.